let's begin with the graph of private goods for private goods let's let's assume that this is the demand curve of a and this is the demand curve of b now you know one question that arises is that when the demand curve of b is above the demand curve of a what does this imply this implies very simply that at any price the demand of b actually not demand we should say quantity demanded because we are finding relationship with price so the quantity demanded of good by individual b is more than that of individual a so either i can say that okay if i take any price let's take the price to be this much at any price whatever b demands that is more than whatever a demands this is one way of seeing whenever the demand curve of b is above the demand curve of a alternatively we can also say that at any quantity the willingness to pay by a is less than the willingness to pay by b so we can also say that the willingness to pay for same quantity so suppose we are consuming the same quantity then the willingness to pay by b is more than that by a a wants to pay less for the same commodity and b wants to pay more for the same quantity okay now i have to try and find out the market demand if i ask you in this case what is the market demand at this price so at let's take this as price p1 at price p1 the demand by a is zero right because it is touching the y axis so a is not consuming anything demand by b is there by what quantity this much units whatever comes from the demand curve so at price p1 b is consuming let's say small q quantity what is the market demand then market demand is demand by a plus demand by b which is zero plus q which is also q so the market demand at price p1 is the same as the demand by individual b which is this now what happens at any price above p1 so let's take a price like p2 at price p2 again a is not consuming right because he is not willing to pay any uh, he is not willing to consume anything if the price is p2 his demand curve is not there but at price p2 the demand by b is this much so demand by a is zero b is consuming this quantity so the market demand is also this much and this holds true for any price above p1 so when price is p3 suppose then also only b is consuming when price is b4 then neither a nor b is consuming which means till price p1 or price p1 and above the market demand curve coincides with the demand curve of b this part itself becomes the market demand curve 
for any price above P1. Please think once and let me know if this is clear because this is very important. At any price above P1, the demand by individual A is zero. Because the demand by individual A is zero, market demand is simply the demand by individual B. That is why at any price above P1, the demand curve of individual B becomes the market demand curve. Any doubts? Okay. Now, let's consider a price lower than that of P1. So let us say that the price is P5. Then at that price P5, we have some consumption by A. We have some consumption by B. So let's say that the consumption by A is 3 units. Let's say that the consumption by B is 5 units. Then market consumption is 8 units. To show these 8 units, all that we have to do is to add 3 here because already this x-axis shows 5. If I add additional 3 of individual A, the point that lies here automatically shows 8 units, which is the market demand. So what I'm going to do is just below price P1 at each point of demand curve of B, I keep on adding the demand curve of A. So, you know, here, this is the demand by B. I add the amount of demand by A. I add the amount of demand by A. I add the amount of demand by A and so on. And I keep on joining all these points. So this entire green line shows us the market demand curve. So to find the market demand curve, what process we followed? We took one price and added the demand of individual A and B. Then we took another price and did the same process, added the demand of A and B and so on because at any price above p1 demand of a was zero therefore demand of b became the market demand and at any price below p1 this part showed da plus db now in contrast to this let us try and see what is the market demand in case of public goods. Okay, so another thing here is because at a given price I am adding the demands, this is called horizontal summation. I am adding the demands horizontally. I took a price, added the two demands. Took another price, added two demands. So this is horizontal summation. Now let's see what happens in case of public goods. In case of public goods, see, even when the government provides you with public goods, you should agree that the demand that uh, is going to be there the consumption that is going to be there is going to be the same but the willingness to pay is going to be different now what do i mean when i say the willingness to pay is going to be different so for example the government has built up this park okay this park is available to both the individuals let's say for a moment, I want to understand what is the willingness to pay for this park by these two individuals. So, you know, instead of keeping this park free of cost, I put an entry fee on the park. And now I go to individual A and I ask, now 
the park quantity is the same i will say one unit of park is available to you and also to individual b i will say the same that this one unit of park is available to you the question that that then i'm going to ask is that given that one unit of park is available to you what is the entry fee that you are willing to pay for this park so let's say that individual a says that you know i am willing to pay 10 rupee per time that i enter and individual b he thinks that you know the park is is something that he should, he would be using once in a blue moon he is just going to use once in a month or once in in a week something like that he does not has much value addition when the park is built by the government so individual b thinks that you know i am just willing to pay rupees 5 per time that i enter now this willingness together will determine how much tax the government can collect from a particular good now because the government built this park the government has incurred certain cost on building the park we understand that each individual would be willing to pay different price or different taxes and you know we also understand that the tax that we charge may be based on the income may be based on the consumption and so on but at any point of time if i have to understand how much can i recover for building this park that will be equal to the willingness that individual a shows to pay for the park and that individual b shows to pay for the park so in this case in case of public goods the quantity consumed remains constant but the corresponding price paid oblique the willingness to pay let's talk just about willingness to pay for now because that's what the demand curve shows even if i understand that two individuals are willing to pay so and so i can go ahead and build their demand curves so the willingness to pay for the same park by the two individuals is different so here the total willingness to pay or the total price paid is found by the price paid by a and the price paid by b contrast this to the private goods that we studied in private goods p5 was the price paid by both a and b but their consumption was different one was consuming 3 and one was consuming 5 now this is something which is not possible in case of public goods and that is because both of them have to consume the same one park consumption is the same but the willingness to pay will now differ let us try and understand how the demand curve is going to look like in that case so in that case the demand curves are going to look like this suppose this is the demand curve of individual a this is the demand curve of individual b suppose the government says that i am building 10 units of park suppose the quantity of the public good is 10 then according to demand curve of individual a his willingness to pay is zero for those 10 units he is not willing to pay anything for the same 10 units b is willing to pay let's say 50 rupees then the total amount or total tax that the government can collect for 
the public goods, maybe 10 flyovers that the government has built is 50 rupees. Now, let's say that the government tells that I'm building nine flyovers only. Then for the nine flyovers, A is willing to pay a certain price, which is maybe 40 rupees. B is willing to pay a certain price. Let's say that B is willing to pay maybe 60 rupees. Then the total amount that the government collects is going to be 40 plus 60, which is going to be 100 rupees. So at quantity 9, the government is going to collect a total of 100 rupees from people. And this is where I get my point. Similarly, let's say that the government just wants to build one park or one flyover. Then for that one park, A is willing to pay 80 rupees. For the same one park, you know, B is willing to pay 120 rupees. So the total amount that government collects is 120 plus 80, which is 200 rupees. Let's draw a point here, which represents 200. So I get a point like this. If I join all such points, which are these. You know, then this actually gives me the demand curve for public goods. This entire line, in fact, this and this part. So, what are the takeaways? The takeaways are that when I talk about public good, I fix the quantity. I say that the government is only providing one unit or the government is only providing nine units. But I fix the quantity and I add the willingness to pay by each individual. So if the quantity is one unit, he is willing to pay a certain price. The other person is willing to pay a certain price. What's the total amount the government collects? If the quantity is nine units, he is willing to pay a certain price. The other person is willing to pay a certain price. What's the total amount? What's the total price collected by the government? So we add vertically. There is vertical summation. The same quantity. Maybe if the government ends up producing nine units, then nine units are available both to A and B, but their willingness to pay are different. Whereas in case of private goods, the price is fixed and the quantities are different.